brain tumors. These are what happens when your brain cells go crazy. And that's a primary brain tumor. 50% of tumors in the brain are primary. 50% are metastatic from other parts of the body. Look at metastatic first. If you look at the imaging, they're usually multiple. And they're well circumscribed. You see nice circles here. And they're at the gray-white junction. In contrast, primary tumors will usually just be single tumors. Metastatic or multiple tumors, primary tumors are single tumors. And they're classified based on the cell type of origin. So these primary tumors can be from astrocytes, from oligodendrocytes, etc. The other way we can classify them, which I like, is whether they pri appear primarily in adults or in children. Um, this Anatomically, they have differences. The adults usually occur in supratentorially, in this green area of the brain, right above the tentorium. And in children, it's usually infratentorium, infratentorial, which is below in the blue area, which is basically the cerebellum. So going into adult brain tumors first, we're going to talk about the glioblastoma multiforme, GVM. This is a super nasty tumor. It's made from astrocytes. It's a high-grade, high grade 4 tumor. Often crosses the corpus callosum, which is straight down the middle. So you see this tumor here that's crossed the corpus callosum, and it's got like two butterfly wings. So we call this a butterfly lesion. Histology is pretty simple here. We know it's from astrocytes, so we know it's going to stain positive for GFAP. The other thing to note is that um, it's going to be a pseudopalisading tumor cells. So we can see here, I, I kind of think, think of that as like kind of wavy, kind of packed together tumor cells. You see them all packed together right here. And they're surrounding central areas of necrosis and hemorrhage. This is easy to remember. We just know that GBM is a super nasty tumor. So there's going to be lots of necrosis and lots of hemorrhage. The next tumor is the oligodendroglioma. Um, it's rare, it's slow growing. On imaging, it's a calcified tumor. Histology, again, is pretty easy. We know that oligodendrocytes are fried egg looking cells, so the, um, the tumor is going to look the same way. And then you also see some chicken wire capillaries here, which I've shown. And the easiest way to remember this is chicken and eggs, okay? So this is our big oligodendroglioma, the O for oligodendrocyte. And then we get a little chicken here. Very easy to remember. We have a chicken for the oligodendrogliomas. Alright, next is the meningiomas. This is not a tumor of the brain cells itself, it's a tumor of the meninges, which I think of as a wrapper for the brain. It surrounds the brain, it's a wrapper for it, but it's not part of the brain. So these tumors, this is a benign tumor, it can compress the brain, but it does not invade the cortex. It can compress the brain and cause seizures. On imaging, you're going to see a round mass, you can see here, and it's going to be a dural tail. Whenever you see this, especially that dural tail, you're going to know it's a meningioma. It's going to be super easy. And that dural tail happens just because it's not part of the brain. It's just surrounding it. So it just wraps around it. On histology, you're going to see a world pattern with somoma bodies. Um, and do you remember that mnemonic for somoma bodies? It's this one right here. Somoma. Okay, so it's papillary. First one is papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. The second one is for what do you, do you remember what it is? It's for serous cyst adenoma adenocarcinoma of the ovary. This M here is meningioma, which we're talking about. Meningioma. And then the last one is mesothelioma of the lungs. Okay. So back to our slides. This is also so this one is one of the ones with the somoma bodies on histology. Next is the schwannoma from Swan cells this is a benign tumor. It's usually at the cerebello pontine angle. That's basically just where the cerebellum at the back of the brain and the pons meet. And it usually involves cranial nerve seven and cranial nerve eight. But it can involve any peripheral nerve because remember that Schwann cells myelinate with the peripheral nervous system. If you see bilateral tumors, um, then they're probably going to ask you what syndrome this patient has. And the answer is going to be NF2. This is a we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but it's a, it's a syndrome that's associated with bilateral schwannomas. Here's an imaging. This is the cerebellopontine angle right here. Okay, that's the angle. You see it again here, cerebellopontine angle with the tumor circled. On histology it's going to stay in positive for S100 and there's going to be alternating or switching areas of hypercellular and hypocellular regions. 
Next tumor is a heme angioblastoma. This is a tumor of the blood vessel origin, as you can see from heme angio, and blastoma is for a tumor. It usually arrives in this, uh, rises in the cerebellum, and the syndrome this one is associated with is the von Hippel-Lindau syndrome. Do you remember what tumors are associated in this syndrome? It's going to be renal cell carcinoma, heme angioblastoma, and retinoangiomas. This tumor is a blood vessel origin, so it can produce EPO, uh, which stimulates red blood cell production, and you can get polycythemia, which is high red blood cells. On histology, it makes sense. It's going to be many thin-walled capillaries in close, close proximity. As you can see here, there's tons of little red blood cells inside the little capillaries. Lots of capillaries in close proximity. Right, the next one is the primary CNS lymphoma. The key here is it's the most common tumor in immunosuppressed patient. So if you're going to see an immunosuppressed patient, you're going to be thinking primary CNS lymphoma. It's often associated with the Epstein-Barr virus. And the next tumor is a pitu pituitary adenoma. This can be um, hormone producing because this pituitary gland makes hormones. So this tumor can make hormones or can be non-hormone product producing or silent. So for, for the ones that make hormones, the most common one, hormones made are prolactin, growth hormone, and then uh, ACTH. The ones that don't produce hormones um, present with symptoms of mass effect. So they cause by temporal hemianopsia. So this is our vision here. And basically what happens is your outside vision is impaired. So by temporal, both sides, and hemi, half of the vision um, is impaired on, on both sides. On histology, if you cut into it, you're going to see hyperplasia of one of the endocrine cells in the pituitary. So pituitary has different endocrine cells making prolactin, making growth hormone, making ACTH. So when you cut into it, you're going to see hyperplasia of one of these. If it's a prolactinoma, you're going to see um, hyperplasia of the prolactin cells, prolactin making cells. Now we're going to switch gears. We're going to look at children's tumors now. Um, the first one is the pilocytic astrocytoma. Again, this is also an astro from astrocytes. But this one's a low grade compared to the GVM, which was high grade. This is the most common benign tumor. Again, it's GFAT positive. And the key thing here is the Rose and Hall fibers. Um, and these are basically just the long processes of the, um, the astrocytes. Remember, the astrocyte looks like a star, it's got long processes. These Rose and Hall fibers are eosinophilic corkscrew fibers. Um, you think of them as the processes of the astrocytes. The next one is a medulloblastoma. It's from um, cells of the cerebellum. And this one can compress the fourth ventricle and cause hydro hydrocephalus. We're going to explain that in later slides if you don't understand what I'm talking about. And this one can also grow and spread via the cerebrospinal fluid, um, which is contiguous with the spinal cord, so they can go down to the spinal cord. And so if it drops down from the brain to the spinal cord, this is called a drop metastasis. On histology, you're going to see small blue cells and then you're going to see a Homer right rosette, as you can see here. A rosette is basically, basically it's just um, tumor cells in a circular area. It refers to some kind of stained glass type of um, picture. You can Google it. And it kind of looks like that. It's just circular, it's surrounding a circle area. Okay, and the inside is an empty lumen. The next one is the ependymoma. Uh, remember, ependymal cells line the ventricles and the central canal of the, of the spinal cord. These are most commonly found in the fourth ventricle, and then when they block up the ventricle, they can cause hydrocephalus or dilation of your ventricles. On histology, this one is a pseudo rosette. So, what's the difference between a rosette and a pseudo rosette? Is that a rosette, a pseudo, a rosette is surrounding an empty lumen, so this is all empty. A pseudo rosette, it's uh, tumor cells surrounding a blood vessel. So it's not an empty lumen, it's actually a blood vessel, so it's pseudo. It's not surrounding an empty lumen. So I kind of remember this. It's hard to remember. This is not a great way, but ependymomas usually line the ventricles. So um, when they become tumors, they still end up lining stuff. They still end up lining surrounding the, the blood vessels. So they are the pseudo rosettes. Finally, we have craniopharyngiomas. This is the most common supratentorial tumor in children. Remember that usually in children, it's infratentorial in the cerebellar area, but this one is supratentorial. Um, it basically arises near the pituitary gland. This is from the remnant of the Rathke pouch, which um, the Rathke pouch is just some development thing that will end up becoming your anterior pituitary gland. 
So this tumor is basically in the same area, so you're going to have the same symptoms as a pituitary adenoma, which is bitemporal hemianopsia. The key is that if you, if you see it in an adult, you're going to think pituitary adenoma. If, if you see bitemporal hemianopsia in a child, you're going to be thinking craniopharyngioma. The key things on histology here are you're going to see calcification and you're going to see a motor oil-like fluid within the tumor with cholesterol crystals. Again, if you see motor oil-like fluid on, on the histology, the answer is going to be craniopharyngioma. All right, so that's it for brain tumors. It's a lot of memorization, a lot of histology. Um, you're just going to have to beat it into your brain, um, and then it's going to be easy peasy.